Colleen Irwin, and I'm here tonight with Randy Sands and Eric Chassie. So we're going to talk a little bit about grooming dogs. We're going to talk about mediumship and maybe a thing or two else. We'll see what happens. So Eric, I want to start with you first. If I am correct, you're a well-known groomer and you also show dogs. Is that right? Yes. That is correct. <laughs> Do you enjoy doing that? Oh, you want me to like... elaborate on that? <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I love grooming dogs for the most part. I mean, it is like the day to day is kind of boring, but you have those special dogs that get like the really pretty haircuts that are fun to do. And then showing dogs and grooming my own personal dogs is my favorite. Um, just because I know them and they're really well behaved and easy and I can make them beautiful. And then my little toy poodle, I can do fun little creative things to her. Grooming dogs is fun, but you just have to you have to learn how to work around them instead of getting them to work with you. That's kind of cool. So how do you know Randy? I know Randy from grooming world. We met awesome. on Facebook. And then I think the first time we met in person was, it was either Hershey or Fun in the Sun. Fun in the Sun. Okay. <clears throat> What's your dog grooming? What's your dog grooming shows? Their contests. Um, grooming of... contests are also one of my favorite things to do because it is like it's just breed standard beautiful grooming, and that's like my. I thought when I grew up as a groomer, I would just be doing beautiful breed standard grooming. I didn't know that I had to do ugly grooming. <laughs> or in my case, you're a creative groomer and you kind of carve patterns all the way down their sides. Right. But but people don't realize that grooming contests are a big thing. There's shows all over the country and people and don't realize that we have our own Olympic groom team. We have Groom Team USA. Well, in the last 10 years, maybe only five years, it's impossible. Like the grooming, the trade shows have blown up to get into a contest. You have to be like at your laptop ready to enter the minute the show's open or else you're not competing. It's insane. It's become so, so that's kind of cool. Get into a class. So Eric, how did you and Randy get started with readings? Um, I don't really know how it happened. I think she just was like, Hey, I'm going to tell you about this. And was like, I, I was, I didn't know that she did readings. Um, the first reading that I remember her doing, we were actually talking about in another part of my life, I was doing a fitness show and working with mm -hmm. a trainer and she was telling me, and it was after the show and like my life was a disaster. Um, but she was kind of like coaching me through that and like, this is what was do I was doing wrong and this is what I should be doing. But then it kind of moved into um talking about one of my dogs who was old and he was sick and like he was just aging and I was like I just don't know when it will be time and like I just making that decision is a hard one and she just said it, it was simple just he'll let you know when and I was like <sighs> okay <laughs> that's a very big answer but when he did i knew like it was immediate that i knew and then i didn't act right away so then a co-worker just looked at me and was like eric it is time and i was like oh he told you to so she just <laughs> they have a way of doing that don't they yeah mm -hmm. a lot of so people don't Randy. know a lot of people don't know that I used to be a competitive power lifter when I was younger. So when Eric was going through that, I was seeing little things. So yes, we were talking and I just kind of popped off with it because at that point it was still kind of my best kept secret. Mm -hmm. 
and that leads into a question I had, I was going to lead into with you, Randy. Um, I know you kept your mediumship very hidden for a very long time. Mm -hmm. What was it like to do readings for someone you knew from a different industry? <laughs> you want me to tell you the truth? When I de No, I want you to lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me work on that. No, I'm joking. Um, when I was moved to move from grooming to this, um, and you, you understand as a medium how that works. It's not really our choice. I had 5,000 people on Facebook already. And I was so worried that I dumped a lot of groomers and started taking on more spiritual people. So, and you know, when you start, when you first start out and you start letting everybody know, it, it's, it's kind of like, you know, telling your, your people that, you know, you live an alternative lifestyle or something. You don't know how they're going to react. I was so excited. <laughs> so excited. So Eric, I think, was probably one of the first in our industry that I did a reading for. And it was, it was very nerve wracking but spirit just kept coming through and it was like poking me while I was talking to him. And I'm like, listen, I just got to tell you this. It was very out of the blue. And that, and when she told me, I was like, oh, I've always wanted to like do this. It was cool. And it was, I also love anything psychic medium. And I don't care if you believe or don't believe, I think everyone should go because just listening and taking the advice or like, not even advice, but just what was said. You can get some form of clarity, even if it's the most vague reading on the face of the earth. You well, they shouldn't be, but yeah, okay. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it just, it's more, I've had all positive experiences, even when they are like vague or like, I've had readings that like weren't for me. I was just like the, to deliver the message to someone else. But it's always like, there's a sense of, I don't know, like peace and like, okay-ness. I don't know, it's- Healing, it's healing. Yeah. So Eric, if I remember correctly, I've seen you in a couple of um, Randy's animal communication classes that she okay. taught. Mm -hmm. um, those are really fun, like it's, it's fun because Randy did Comet, which was just a, uh, he'll let you know. Um, doing the class was fun because it was learning a little bit more about my other dogs. Um, and every time I got a new person, I'd pull up a new dog because I have three of them. So everyone got <laughs> to read a different dog. And it was funny that they could like kind of get their personalities just from seeing them on the screen. Um, it was just, it was really interesting to hear what they think. I mean, and I think every pet person is always afraid that their dog is going to be like, my dad sucks. <laughs> and <it's, laughs> he could have done this better, but here we are. I think it's like every parent is afraid their child is going to say something like that. Um, but it, so it was really cool to do that. And I actually like, even in those, I've had random, I know I'm supposed to be doing this with your pet, but I have to tell you something. And one of, in one of them, one of those students was like, I, are you going to California? Do you have a trip planned to California? Do you want to go to California? And I was like, I'm not, California's like not on my list of things to do. And he was like, well, you're going to LA. And I was like, N if I'm going to California, I was like, LA is the last place I'm going to go. Um, and then I was in LA this summer, like literally six months later, I was flown to LA to film a TV show. So it was just weird, like in the class for animal communication, I got that message on the side. Like it was just, sorry, that's me and I don't know. How okay, to... as long as it's somebody we know. <laughs> it's me doing that, like... I don't know how to stop it. <laughs> 
So it's amazing how her students have such accuracy from the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. It was, it, it was just, and it's something like out of the blue like that, that I was like, LA, like, I mean, even Randy told me I was moving to California. So, I mean, we'll see. I have actually been told I was moving to California in every reading I've had. But some reason I chose Florida. Oh, it's got an ocean. I mean, <laughs> you just hit the wrong coast. Um, Randy, what was it like having Eric in your class as a sitter? Nerve wracking the first time because that particular class had a lot of people that had never worked with spirit before. So uh, you know, as well as I do that, you know, brand new students, they don't always know how to interpret information 100%. So their accuracy can be at times spotty. Um, but usually it's on point. And bringing somebody in from the industry to sit with my newbies, the first time was a little nerve wracking. But you and I teach and very animal communication. Yes, yes. And so, so it's very specific. It's not just mediumship, it's animal communication. And you're bringing in an animal expert, a well known groomer, yes. Um, but you know, you and I kind of have a lot of the same teaching style and that we're very regimented in our teaching. Mm -hmm. So I had confidence in my students and I think they did very well. I didn't know it was their first time. Oh yeah. It was really good. I had no idea. It was the first Just time. about every single one of them was brand new. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here, Eric, and say that you really felt that that experience was amazing. Yeah, it was a great experience. I mean, I I if you go in expecting a bad experience, you're obviously gonna have a bad experience. If you go in open minded, not even believing, just open minded, you're gonna have a good experience. And they were accurate. With some things were not accurate. Other things, I was like, hey. That makes sense why my dog barks at this person or is 20 minutes late barking at this person. So, I mean, it, there were some misses, like I said, but it's bound to happen. It's a learning process. Right. And, you, and you're willing to be part of that process, which as a student, it's amazing to have that kind of feedback where somebody is open and willing to say, yeah, I don't understand that. Because they may say something today, and I, and I try and teach my students this all the time, Randy, and you do too, you may give a message and it be dead on and they have no idea. And six months later, they're calling you going, you know that reading you gave me the, six months ago? Right, well, and- It makes sense. So th it's possible that they could have picked something up elsewhere so would you what would you say to someone thinking about taking one of randy's classes i mean if it's something you're interested in definitely do it i can only imagine that it is like something like like grooming you have to you have to practice you have to study you have to do all of your due diligence and if you put in the work i mean i've seen our students who have obviously put in the work i think i did two and I either did one regular medium and one um, animal or two animals. I think you did two animal, two of the animal communication classes. <laughs> um, but I mean, both times, even their first time reading, it was like there were, there were some pretty strong hits. And I mean, that do, animal that animal communication class everybody was brand new working with spirit except for one okay everybody else was brand new so eric when are you going to start studying <laughs> so you can do this so <laughs> i am not there yet i know i put you on the hot seat sorry <laughs> I, no, I, 
It's something that I enjoy having done for me. Um, uh, I think I'm a little too, I would have to definitely work on being able to set up barriers and not letting think. Cause I, if there is a hint of any type of energy in the room, I just suck it up and take it on. And I just, I need to work on that first. <laughs> That's something that you learn in a mediumship class. Oh, Believe okay. it or not, that's one of the first things that I teach people is about energy and boundaries and 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 how you deal with that. Because otherwise you go you go crazy. So I want to take it back to Randy's class for a minute here. And I want you to think about one of the stories or one of the, the instances you had with one of the students. Did any of them give you goosebumps when they said something? Um, I forget. And it could be Randy too. I forget what, it wasn't the animal class. It was the regular medium class. And I forget what was said, but there was a part, it wasn't necessarily goosebumps, but I was like, you are nailing this. Like you are so right. Cause they just knew things. I forget what, it had something to do with my grandmother, I think. And they just like, I think they, what was it? I want to say it had something to do with the way she cooked vegetables, which was basically you steam them and you throw a stick of butter on them and that was it. Like, I think that it was something as simple as that. And I was like, that is my grandmother. Like, <laughs> it was, and I was like, that is so specific. And like, maybe everyone's grandmother did that, but that's how I thought vegetables tasted good because they had a pound of butter on them. <laughs> yeah, my so, grandmother definitely didn't make them like that. <laughs> It was literally like I like your grandmother's nasty, recipe. It was nasty vegetables out of a can. She just dumped them in the pan to heat them up, put them on the table, and throw a stick of butter on them. That, <laughs> that wasn't like fancy dinner. That was just like your normal dinner. Like Friday night dinner, here you go. But when it came time to cook, she'd cook these big elaborate meals. And they talked mostly about her cooking, which was everything from her like butter and canned vegetables to her big extravagant meals so it was crazy just the, that's awesome the nostalgia so, that went with it like it was just something that i forgot about until they said it so randy i have a question for you and and you you gave me a whole bunch of questions but i think it's only fair that you get one that you don't know that's coming <laughs> in your interactions with a lot of these groomers and you realize that they have the ability to connect and they're and they're and they're ready what it, what is it that you say to them to to try and get them to take the next step so that they can be more powerful in what they do by stepping into i'm not sure this. i'm understanding the question you mean somebody that's interested or just somebody I see and I know. You see and you know. So in other what words, like I tell them how important it is. Animal communicators, people don't realize that they are extremely important. You know, I can't stress this enough because there's not enough of them. And you have multifunctions animal, as an animal communicator. One is keeping animals in loving homes. There could be behavior issues. An animal may not understand what's expected of it. There may be something going on that's upsetting the animal. I mean, it could be a lot of things. And you have the ability to work with that and keep that animal in a loving home instead of in a rescue. Another aspect, which is I help with lost animals. So, you know, I look at mapping systems and whatnot and get a feel for where it is. So, you know, I can't tell you how many people call me up and say, I don't understand. I have one right now. I don't understand why my horse is doing whatever it's doing. I haven't gotten there yet. Um, or I have a lost animal. I just had a vet 
out here contact me a few weeks ago, lost her cat. And I tapped in, she got her cat back. She, she wrote me an amazing review. Um, but these are the things that are needed and there's not enough of them. So imagine how much work there is for us, but we're only one person. I, so I can't get to everybody as much as I'd like to. And sometimes I'm booked weeks out. So if there's a lost animal and I'm booked weeks out, I'm either doing that after work or it doesn't get done. And they're definitely needed. That's a good answer. I know in my own mediumship, I, I, I get animals that come in and, and I, I work with them, but I don't work with animals directly for the most part, but I get a lot of animals, which sometimes surprises me. And, and, and it's funny because all the dogs come to me. I'm a cat person. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> The dogs come oh, to me. You don't love dogs? Here we come. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, there's so. also another aspect, which is I recently had a gal contact me. She wanted to connect with her dog that had crossed over, graduated to spirit. And she was amazed because I could tell her so much that there was no way for me to know. You know, she would take this doc, this dog on a walk to a certain place. And when she did, there was a certain song she sang. During the reading, I said, I keep getting this song. And I told her what it was. And she was like, oh my God, I sang that to him every time we went there. You know, and if that's not evidence, there's no evidence, you know what I'm saying? I never thought of bringing a picture to one of the classes or else I would have been there with my picture of my pit bull. In a sense. And that's what this dog was. Doing that. I that's, a, that's what this dog was that I read. He was a pity. So, this has been really fun and exciting. Eric, do you have anything coming up that you want to share with people? Not, I, I mean, it's holiday season, so it's just slaving away and grooming as many dogs as you can before Christmas. Oh, uh, time for a grandma. Pretty, uh, it's the worst <laughs> two weeks of the year for us. From um, October 31st to January 1st, it is, pardon my language, hell to yeah. be a groomer. Mm -hmm. You but can no, work. I mean, COVID's kind of squashed everything, which is yeah. nice. I am enjoying having no obligations, just what I want. A typical year, you can work seven days a week from October 31st to January 1st, and you could work 14 hours a day. Mm -hmm. I'm doing two six day work weeks. Yeah, a normal, a normal holiday season for a groomer is, it, it'll kill you. Terrible. So, after the holidays, Randy, you got some classes coming up, which I'm real excited about. You want to share? Um, we do have an animal communication class starting January, I want to say 17th. And we have some mediumship practice rooms that are going to start that are once a week for people to come in and, and practice and hone their skills and their abilities. And there should be a mediumship class, a regular mediumship class starting in February. What I haven't told anybody yet is I'm going to have a meditation on connecting with your spirit guides in January. And that's not up on the website yet, nor is the, the mediumship class. They'll go up in the next uh, couple weeks. Well, not even. They'll probably go up in the next week. That's exciting. The Meet Your Spirit well, guys one is really, really fun. 
and Randy, you also have Monday nights. Yes, yes. Where you we, get us all together. Yes, if anybody is interested in spiritual topics and you haven't seen us yet, we have a YouTube channel, um, and it's my name, Randy Sands, and we do all different kinds of spiritual topics. So there's a lot of videos. Every Monday night, we have a video. And we started something new this Monday, which is we did at 9 p.m. We do um, this really wonderful, loving, heart-centered, um, small little bit of sending positive energy and healing to where it's needed in the world. Yeah, we and we have different ministers that each week lead it. it we have a video that helps us kind of focus and it, it's really lovely. Yeah, you're the minister this coming week, aren't you? No, SSK is. Oh no, Tammy. Tammy is. Tammy is. Tammy is. Um, and and it's non-denominational. We just do. We have people that if you want to pray for somebody, you just type in their first name, and it's on Facebook Live. And um, then we have a little slideshow why everybody's sending out healing and prayers it's like three minutes it's short but it's powerful so you do awesome work so that, that sending the good energy where it needs to be thing is pretty oh well, awesome, so. with covid and everything going on we you know we felt that well we didn't feel we got requests for a lot of it so we decided to put it together oh. And one of the things that's neat is that there are so many different healing mo modalities and everyone has a different way of doing their healing. We created this three minute video that if you're not a healer, if all you do is read along with each slide, you're actually sending healing because you're, you're putting energy into that slide. So right. it's, it's really wonderful to do that, you know? That's awesome. And while the slide's playing, it gives each person the ability to work within their their modality that they resonate with. Because I felt it wasn't up to us to dictate how somebody works. You work the way you you work. And this way it gives people freedom to work that way. I think teaching people about energy is an awesome thing because it took me a while like when i was in massage school it took me a while to like i was like mm, reiki's a joke and then the teacher was like okay the only person that reacted to reiki in a physical manner was you so you can't tell me it's a joke and i was like oh and then like just as <laughs> life has gone on you the someone brought up manifesting to me and i was like <laughs> and then like i did it once or twice by accident, not realizing it. And like, I don't know, once you realize what you put out and the more positive you put out, the more positive you see and the more positive that is around you and the more people you affect in a positive way. And I've kind of just in the last year have noticed that the more, and this is what I did get from Florida because I, I refer to Florida as my mental rehab. <laughs> <laughs> It was kind of like a mental reset and I just started going to yoga and one of the times I did a, like a meditation at the end and it was, it just really, Randy actually commented on what they said and said something about she can't twist into a pretzel, but they were dead on with what they said. Um, it just, it made me think more about it. So just the energy stuff that you guys are doing, even if you just like get one person to think one positive thought more than they would have in a day. It's awesome. So that's a big step. Just one person. It is. And you know, that person may get someone else to, to do it and the next person and it multiplies and we're off and running and the world becomes a better place. Once you realize energy is a big suck hole, you just have to pick what energy you're getting sucked into. It makes life a lot easier. You know what somebody said to me once? I'll, I'll share this really quickly. When I was much, much younger, somebody turned to me and said, listen, when you're born, 
you're only allowed so many good times. So if you choose to give up one of your good times, it's going to go to somebody you don't even know. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. They're like, so why don't you be the one that sits around collecting all the good times that other people want? <laughs> I like that. I like mm -hmm. that. It worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no, we can't have that. <sighs> no. Well, those were all the questions I had. I didn't know if you had anything else, Brandy, you wanted to share. No, just um, Eric. You need to come down to Florida and visit. Once pandemic life is over, I will be there. I I look forward to it. I've had enough of winter already, and we've only had one snowstorm. So I think we should. You know, it's twenty degrees here in Rochester, and I'm like, it's I'm too done. early for that. It's too early for that. She just yelled at me when before we went live because I said, "Oh my God, it's freezing here." What is it? Seventy five. 64. 64, oh she's complaining. I'm lucky if my apartment's at 64. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm telling you, I can't do it. When I was living in Florida, me and my roommate got in fights over the air conditioner because he'd want it at 75. And I go, that is too hot to sleep. 68, <laughs> please. Oh, I'd die. That's a perfect sleeping temperature. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, okay, I've had enough of you two now. <laughs> it's okay. I, she can't wrap her, he her head around the difference between sleet and ham. They're both frozen, right? Okay, I've had enough of you two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go and take a hot shower and bundle up into pajamas that I never wear and get in bed. Do I need to send you wool socks? You, I, you know what? I have a pair just in case I'm ever in cold weather. I have some on right now and sweat. I just, I just crocheted a hat. I could, I could send you this. Oh, that, Lovely. I think that would hold your hair back perfect so you don't have the alfalfa sprout. Yeah, I'll, See, we'll just wait for my hair to grow. You can... Flower. You can send that to Eric. <laughs> I would wear it every day at work because it is freezing at work. Uh, I know you'd wear it. <laughs> All right, my loves. I am off and running to take a hot shower. I'm sitting here drinking hot tea at night. Oh. This is not good. That tells you how cold it is. Drama. Drinking tea yes. at night is a diuretic. That's really not well, you know what? It's keeping me from freezing to death. So it is what it is. And I'm going to take my hot shower and bundle up and get in bed. All right. Love you both. Well, it was fun Love talking you to both. you both. Say goodbye to everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.